Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Perspective Matters This Week in Behavioral Healthcare. My name is Glenn Hadley. I'm your host today. Uh, I'm just really excited to have you all here and joining us on the show. And, and uh, just to, to give everybody a, an idea of what we do here on the show, our, our goal is to, to highlight different parts of behavioral health care, whether it's the, the clinical perspective, the uh, operational perspective, the business side of it, getting into business development, things like that, marketing. Um, and also we deal with some public policy as well. So uh, we have guests on the show that, that offer a broad range of perspectives. And, and our goal is to provide a platform for uh, education as well as mentorship. I know that uh, something that's really important in this field is, is mentors. And so uh, our, our goal is to bring that to you guys here in, in, in the show uh, every week on Wednesday. So really glad to have you guys join us today. I'd, I'd like to thank our, our sponsors for being a part of this deal. Without um, these guys, uh, the show doesn't happen. And so we have a new sponsor on the show today, RevWorks. Uh, they're a billing, uh, billing company out of Southern California, and, and they do fantastic work in our space, uh, specifically designed for behavioral health care. And so for any of your billing needs, you can reach out to the team over at RevWorks. I also want to thank Dreamscape Marketing for, thank, for making this possible. Uh, we have our friend Dave here. From Dreamscape and and uh, you know we we put the show on, but I'll tell you something. Dave is really the brains behind the deal and and really makes it uh, makes it happen. So if you guys have any marketing needs in uh, behavioral healthcare, reach out to the team at Dreamscape Marketing. Excellent. So with that, I want to go ahead and and we'll roll into the show today. Um, so my guest on on the show today uh, for Perspective Matters is uh, is Al Smith. Al was a an All Pro for the Houston Oilers. He's also a, an author. He's got a book out um, and, and a motivational speaker as well. And, and uh, Al is also the, uh, the, the chairman for the NFL Alumni Association and the Tennessee chapter, and is also uh, one of the national uh, board members for the NFL alumni. So uh, we're definitely uh, glad to have Al on the show today. And so with that, um, Al, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you for having me, Glenn. Right on, excellent. So. Just to kind of get into it and, and, and let the audience know, Al, let them know a little bit about you and, and how did you, like, let us know about your journey into the, the NFL and into playing football. And because and, uh, I know a lot of us out there are, are NFL fans and, and uh, it's a world that we, we see on Sundays, right? But like, what was your journey like? How did that go uh, to, to actually get into the NFL? Well, I'll start out, you know, you know, you know just like anybody as a kid, you know, you're out playing with your friends, playing sports or what have you. And it was never my goal of mine to, to, to play in the NFL. It was just, you know, having fun. Uh, you start out in uh, Little League or, or flag. You know, I never did play Little League uh, football. It was like more flag football. But I came from, I'm from uh, California, Los Angeles, California. So flag football is a little, a little rougher. <laughs> it was more of a rougher flag football. So it was kind of like kind of preparing me for tackle. So it was like the next step up was tackle going into high school. And it was like the flag was, was optional, right? Like, <laughs> it, was a more it, was like oops, it was like, oops, I tried to get the flag and, you know, it yeah. knocked it around a little bit. So, so that kind of prepared me. So it was, it was, that was a, 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 obviously a fun aspect. But at the same time, going into high school, it gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, obviously have a, good, a lot of good relationships, a lot of good friends. But my whole objective was to initially playing. Uh, it was just getting to college. It was able to be able to pay for college and and have that opportunity. And uh, and you know, as we know, college debt and a lot of fun, a, a lot of funding with college. Uh, my parents weren't, weren't able to kind of send me to, uh, you know, top schools as far as. Uh, uh, economically so wanted to have an opportunity to be able to pay for school and that was kind of an avenue and that's kind of how it started it kind of just started out as just an avenue to to have an opportunity and uh have fun and kind of de develop your talent along the way yeah because it's it's a, a little bit different uh you know today with all of the the youtube videos and things <laughs> like that for recruiting out there and and I, I found at least whenever i i was going through the recruiting process for college I mean, you had to do a lot more work back then. You had to go travel and, and actually go show up and like talk to the coaches and try out for them. And, and nowadays, so much of that is done virtually, right? It's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, well, it's a lot different now because, you know, with all these different star, you know, you're this star player, you're that kind of star player, uh, this service, uh, these camps, this camp or what have you. Uh, you know, looking back, you know, um, you know, kind of looking at it, kind of looking at my journey, I never really 
uh, have the opportunity to play in 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 uh, you know certain camps or 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 games to to get a lot of exposure. Uh, all my exposure kind of came from just doing it on the field and and somebody noticing me. So uh, in that regard, it kind of did it the old-fashioned way. You know, you kind of just kind of just you know yeah. do your job and see where the chips may fall. And uh, just got opportunity, and then with an opportunity, you you know you know with your work ethic. Uh, uh, your hard work, your ability to overcome, adapt, and all those type of things that that you that you get from those those experiences, be able to take you to the next level, which was college at that time. Yeah. So so explain to me a little bit and to to our audience that you know I I know from my experience that that as 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 growing up as an athlete and and you're surrounded by people, but as you as you progress and you keep moving up different levels some of your peers and other people would, would kind of fall to the wayside, like, um, and, and you keep progressing. What, what was the, what was some of the differences for you um, that separated you from maybe some of your peers as, as you continue to progress? I know that you have the, the, the book, Think Like a Pro, Act Like a Pro, and you, you, you describe some of that with work ethic and, and some of the um, uh, things that you would do differently and do better um, it, it, talk about some of that for those uh, people that are getting into the business world that that want to excel. Like, what were some of the things that set you apart from your peers as you continue to progress? Well, kind of looking into college because it's kind of, you know you know I'm like anyone else. You know, you want you know you have college, you have experience, you, you want to have fun and all those type of things like that. But uh, looking back, I just kind of noticed when there was a choice between. Uh, staying on my goal or staying, staying on what my purpose was as far as if I wanted to get to the next level, if it's okay, well, eating right or, or if it's uh, getting your rest or if it's doing the extra workouts or, or doing things or, or, or doing your, your homework instead of going to a party or, you know, getting your good grades to stay eligible, all those things that you had lurking with, you know, being a student athlete you had to stay on top of those type of things. So a lot of times you had to make a lot of choices as far as do I go with the group or do I, you know, stay on my path? Because everybody is not on the same path that you would want to be. They don't have the same goals that you may have. So you have to do things differently. And sometimes you may take some ridicule or, you know, or take some shots with some friends or what have you. But right. in the end, your true friends uh, will respect you for it in the long run. And you may take the shots along the way, but I've had many friends over the years that kind of look back even at that time, even in college, uh, the respect, uh, your dedication to the cause because they wish they would have at that time uh, because their path may have went a little differently than your path. But that was one of the things that I was instilled, uh, that instilled in me and I always emulated individuals that um, I wanted to be like or wanted to get anyone who was where I wanted to be, that's who I wanted to be around <laughs> and kind of hang with those and, and I think that's why with... Um, you know, one of the goals for, for what we try to do here on, on this show is to showcase mentors because, you know, I think they're so important. The, the things that you're, you're listing and you're talking about, there, there's no magic formula or no, nothing that, no shortcut you can take to success, right? It's, it's a lot of the, the basics, but just uh, doing those basics, getting your rest, making sure you've taken care of, of your body, that you're eating right, you're exercising, you're doing those things. And, and surrounding yourself with people that, that you look up to, um, that you respect, right? And it, it, there's no magic formula to it. That's just kind of the, the way that, that it works in doing the hard work. So get, give me an idea. What, um, who were some of your mentors? Who were some of the people that you looked up to? Well, I was very fortunate. I had an older brother who I was able to uh, follow his path. Um, I mean, he was a great student. He was a great athlete. And uh, I was, you know, when you have an older brother, you, you, you have a standard, <laughs> either, either it's a good standard or a bad standard. I was very fortunate to have one that I, that I emulated because, you know, he was two years ahead of me. So, you know, you know, he went to college, you know, okay, well, I see how it is. I want to go to college. You know, he did well. I want to do well. Oh, he got drafted. Oh, well, I want to work hard. I want to get drafted. So at least I had something uh, with my brother who was able to give me uh, a, a lot of drive and insight to, uh, to be like him. And then once he, he made it, I was very fortunate to have a brother who made it to the pros and I was able to be around him and other pros before I became a pro. It was like, I was in college as an amateur 
but I was always around the pros. And then I saw what it looked like and what they did and, you know, the, you know, the certain things. They had fun just like anyone else. But, the, but when it's time to work, they work. When it's time to play, they play. So I was able to see that and understand that and really uh, embraced uh, uh, that culture and really tried to instill it in my culture, even, even though I was still an amateur on the college ranks and brought that back with me. Right on. What, um, in, 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 uh, maybe a little bit in college, but especially during the transition to the NFL, um, you know, most, I would say most of our audience out there is, is in the behavioral healthcare field somewhere. And, and so um, we, I want to delve a little bit into some of the things that, that you saw, especially around, um, uh, you know, as the NFL has progressed and, and professional football, I should say, has progressed their, um, you know, the, the, old, uh, the old way of doing things where someone would get hurt and then they throw some painkillers at them and get back out on the field and stuff like that. I know a lot of that has changed. So what, what was some of that that you experienced and saw? And what, what is some of the change that you've seen um, over the years when it comes to painkillers and, and how, they, um, how they are addressed on the field? Well, well, there's a lot of different protocols now, obviously, especially when it comes to head injuries and things like that, to where, you know, I remember a time when I would have a concussion, it was like, you know, you kind of like shake it off or, 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 or you have a hit and, and you lose sense of time or kind of what happened in a moment in time, you don't remember a moment in time. And after a little while, you end up going back in. Well, now you have to go through a, a lot of different, um, you know, protocol before they allow you back in. And if you have a concussion, you may be out a week or or two, depending on if you pass whatever tests they are, uh, neurological tests to be able to allow you to get back in. But when it comes to painkillers, I mean, it's almost like or or pain medicine. Uh, it, it became it was a part of the game because of because it is a pain game. No one plays um, sports in general without some sorts of, of pain at some point. Football is, 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 is the epitome, one of the, because it's always contact. And the human body wasn't made for that kind of contact. And at some point, you know, something that has to give. When you have um, um, men that are in the shape that they're in, the sizes that they are, the speeds that they are, uh, the intensity in which they play, uh, the tenacity and all those type of things, you, you, you ball all, all that up into one ball, uh, something's going to give. Something may break, something may tear, or things like that happen. And that's where those pain uh, uh, um, pills or things like that come into play. And, and uh, I don't know if you want to get into it right now, but that's kind of where kind of some of the things that I had to dabble into because of the fact that uh, to continue to play week in and week out, because you play on Sunday, um, you have one day off a week. So you come in Monday, um, you, you kind of, you know, shake the game off. You have Tuesday off, and you're back at it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Try, if you have a home game, uh, uh, you practice uh, Saturday. If you're away game, you travel Saturday, and then you play against Sunday. So it's this, it's this, vicious, this vicious cycle that continues, and um, you keep having these car wrecks with your body, so to speak, but you don't have time to recover from those car wrecks. You know, most people that are in a car wreck, they may, you know, you know be off from their job for a month. Right. <laughs> Before right. they go back. Well, in this case, you're back the next week. And, and uh, on top of that, you've got, you know, four guys that are competing for your spot, right? That you can't, you can't really afford to be off the field, right? Well, exactly. Because it's, it's like, um, there's also saying you can't make the club in the tub, meaning the ice tub or in the, <laughs> in the training room. So um, when you're out, you're basically giving someone else a chance to take your spot because as long as they don't know what your backup can do and what he's capable of, uh, the better you're off because then you continue to perform well or what have you because if someone else comes in, is, in most cases it would be a younger player, if he uh, um, is playing at a high level or what have you, then um, the decision may be made, well, we may well go to a younger player or a cheaper player, salaries come into play, all those type of things, the economic uh, decisions uh, play a factor and all those things come into play and then all of a sudden now, uh, you may be out of a job or on your way out of a job because of the fact that you weren't able to perform. Because it is a performance business and it is an, an availability business. You have to be uh, available. And if you're not available, uh, then uh, you're expendable. So, I mean, what a, what a tough balance uh, with, with not only players, but coaching staff too, of, of managing the expectations 
um, on the on the field, right? Like uh, having uh, the best team that you can out there, and and uh, and also while managing the health of the players. I'm sure that um, you know it, it, as as it's progressed and and we've moved into this new era, um, more programs are out there to help players recover um, in a healthier way. Um, I, I, the concussion protocol thing to me is huge. I think that's uh, phenomenal. What what do you see? from uh, players and coaching staff, how they've adapted to the new protocols and, and tried to strike a balance between performance on the field and actually caring for the player? Well, um, one of the, the good thing about with players nowadays, there's, a, there's an avenue for players to get a second opinion. So within, within the confines of the team, you have your team doctors or what have you, but the team doctors are paid by the team. So you would, you would you would know that they would, may have a little bias there to, to get you back on the field, but at the same time, they're not going to uh, put their profession on, online to put you in harm's way uh, too soon. But if an injury may take four weeks normally to heal for the normal person, well, you may be out in two weeks. You know, those type of things, and all of a sudden that accelerated healing process is expected uh, when when uh, you're expected to be back out, be, to be back out on the field. And... Unfortunately, you know, you know that's the uh, the tough part of the game. But a lot of times, you're able to get the second opinion uh, with another doctor, and the other doctor will say, "Well, we need to stand out, to stay out." But sometimes, it's, it's that fine balance between uh, uh, wanting to play because, as most athletes, they want to be they want to be out there. No right. one wants to be hurt. No one wants to be out of the game. So when you have that, when that happens to you, uh, you're kind of fighting with yourself. Uh, as far as I want to be out there, uh, physically, I, I may hurt my career further if I go out there and get hurt again, then you're really in, in, a, in a tough bind or the fact that, you know, taking that extra week or what have you that may uh, get you out of harm's way or uh, it's a big game, we need you this week, uh, get out there and, and, and hope you don't get a setback. It, it's, a, it's a tough balance. I tell you, there is absolutely nothing worse than being on that sideline watching your teammates out there, and you're like, you're itching to go, man. I, I've I've been there, and and it is it is just something. It is so difficult. So, I mean, I I empathize with the, with the players because they believe me, they want to be out there. Sometimes it's the the doctor that's trying to keep them back, you know, because <laughs> they're like, man, you can't go out like that. That's so, true. It's a tough balance. Something else. So so let's talk about that just a little bit. I, I know you mentioned earlier that um, when we were talking about the, the, the pain medication stuff, like you had, you had an experience with that and, and, um, and, and having to, to push your body beyond its limits and, and, uh, and pain medication was a part of that. So, so share a little bit of that experience with the audience and kind of like what you walked through. Well, for me, I, you know, I never really knew about uh, addiction. When you, when you thought addiction, you, you really thought, okay, well, under the bridge, you're addicted to something, and you're really in, 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 in dire straits. So my first experience with it, I mean, you know, you're in the training room, you see guys get hurt, you see prescriptions being uh, um, given out, whether it be by a doctor or otherwise, or what have you, uh, in, you know, some type of, of pain medicine. But my first experience, real, real experience with it, because I never was one that really wanted to take a, a lot of pills or whatever the case may be. But once I had my first surgery, and uh, you know, you know, going through that situation and the pain and what have you, and and started being able to push a button <laughs> to get some yeah. more pain, you know, to, to to relieve pain and what have you. And then once you leave the hospital and kind of get through the whole surgery process, and you go home with with those pills, it's all of a sudden okay, well, these make me feel a whole lot better. And then when you do get back to play, it's almost like it was like okay, well, after a game taking those, you recover a lot faster, or going into a game, you'd feel a lot better if you take them as opposed to you don't take them. So that became, kind of came, became your um, your uh, your vitamin, so to speak, that yeah. kind of helped you get through. And not knowing that it, it's, you, you, you're addictive, so to speak, or you're addicted to it, it's more or less uh, uh, I'm, I'm, in survival mode, it, it makes me feel better. It's helping me get through. I'm I'm getting back on the field, so I'm I'm fulfilling everybody's purpose because they want me back on the field. I want to be back on the field. Uh, the fans want you back on the field. Everybody wants you out there. So you're doing everything you can to be able to to make that happen. And in in the meantime, uh, you don't realize that hey, you know, um, you know, 
I'm finding different ways to get it now. You know, it could be right. like, you know, or, or doctor or this friend of this and what have you. You find a way to fulfill that because with the team, you know, obviously they can only give you so many at a time and do do this, but but the pain doesn't go away. And um, um, that's one thing about this, um, um, especially football, this, you know, sport, it, it's always a painful situation. It's even like uh, once I stop playing, um, um, that's when I really, really focus on trying to wean myself off of that because, you know, with that or maybe Advil or something else or other things and try to uh, do other remedies to alleviate the pain that you have. But no, there's no pain, no pain like um, having to be out there to perform at a high level and your body not responding the way you need it to do to yeah. perform at that level that everyone, not just yourself, but the people around you, your team, the fans, everyone expects you to be this at this level. And if you're not at that level, something's wrong. Yeah, and, and so like I, I think it's real important for our, uh, you know, our audience probably knows this, but you know, we have these the the preconceived notion that that a, an addict um, is it looks a certain way and is is um, uh, the the bottom has to completely fall out and and uh, you know the, the living on the streets that kind of thing, but. But I think just, uh, you know, the, uh, abusing medication, I, I think, is a, is a huge issue in the United States. And there are services out there that, that are available to people that, that maybe don't fit the mold of your traditional uh, drug addict or alcoholic, but, but are abusing pain medication um, uh, to, to, in order to make it through whatever job they have out there. Um, did you see or have you seen... Um, not only in your, is your time in a player, but also as your, your time um, uh, working with the NFL Alumni Association and being involved with the, the Tennessee Titans organization, have you seen um, more of a, uh, uh, an emphasis on uh, education and, and more services being available for players nowadays? Do they have um, uh, more therapists uh, that are involved, life coaches, um, uh, mentors that are around teams more so now than they did? Um, even let's say 10 years ago? Yeah, there, there's a lot more resources now when it comes to mental health. Uh, resources, people to talk to, uh, uh, therapy, um, um, uh, facilities you can go to. Uh, it's a lot better now. If you have a problem, you get headed off over the, uh, um, before it comes. Because there was times when I was working in the front office with a team and when we were evaluating players that we were going to draft and bring in to the team and what have you, there was this process. And in college, you know, you know, you do this evaluation on players, and you, you get their backgrounds, and you, and you look at everything that um, the good, the bad, the ugly of this player. Because once you invest, you know, if, you, if you're making an investment in a player, you do your due diligence and find out every, all information that you can on this individual. And sometimes it could be like, okay, well, in college, it was known to have have somewhat of a drinking problem, but he's a good player. You know, he may get drunk from time to time, but at the same time, he is a, a great player, but hasn't done anything crazy. But at the same time, you know that coming in, and we would have situations if the team decided to go with this player where the talent outweighed the risk, so to speak, then you would have things in place, or, you know, as far as having a uh, uh, you know, a, a counseling or someone to talk with or somebody to help manage that on the front end before an incident happens. A lot of times the team will wait if you have, you know, something happened in a bar or had a bar fight or had an incident, a domestic uh, 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 incident or some kind of other incident, then try to come in and intervene. We try to intervene and be more proactive on the front end as opposed to be reactive on the back end. Yeah, and that's a, that's a pretty big shift in philosophy um, than, uh, than, than previous, uh, uh, you know, decades, right? Like that's, um, exactly. I, I'm seeing a lot more of that, especially with, um, you know, not, not just with um, addiction issues or substance abuse, but um, also with concussion protocol, right? With, um, uh, you, you, you and I were talking about this before, how they have the, um, the uh, free concussion screenings for NFL alumni. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, well, they have, um, well, it's more of a, a physical um, okay. examination, um, and your mental health is a part of this examination. Now they they integrated uh, mental health um, initiatives as far as with your regular physical, 
you know, whether it be building your heart or your, or your knees and the, your, your brain, uh, uh, depression, stress, you know, all those things are kind of tied into uh, your mental health. And that is a component that wasn't always there. Uh, if someone uh, needs help or needs something, uh, there's resources there now. I mean, there's resources if need be, I could tap into as well, as far as what be therapy or what have you as a, as a retired guy that wasn't there in the past, um, uh, w whatever that may be, it doesn't have to be necessarily a substance abuse, but it could be, a, you know, you know, other issues that you're dealing with it as well. So it's a, a wide range of mental health, uh, things that can be tapped into, which, uh, which is needed because uh, there was a time when you're hearing a lot of players would be basketball players and Kevin Love and different guys are talking about uh, having uh, depression issues or mental health issues. And these are uh, guys that have been in championship games and championship series and guys that you know and you see all the time. You wonder that, you know, they, they seem invincible, but all of a sudden they, when someone's talking about this mental health issue or what have you that he's going through, uh, it, it's kind of a shock, but now it's not more of a shock because so many other guys are coming out because uh, whether it be NFL, uh, tennis, or, or any other association, uh, these athletes aren't immune to the ills of society. And anytime uh, something happens in society, it's the same things happening in the sports world as well. And this is a matter of how guys manage it. Some guys manage it better than others, some guys don't deal with it, and some guys really struggle with it. And that's the, uh, the thing as far as trying to have things in place to manage it, so see situations, see uh, problems before they exist, and being able to intervene, intervene on the front end and not, being, and not being reactive on the back end. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you that um, from, from my experience that, that people do, they have an idea of a professional athlete as – um, uh, not, not really being human, right? We, we were able to do these things out on the field or on the court or whatever that, um, that's, that uh, most people can't do. But whenever it comes down to it, we all suffer um, or, or are, can play victim to uh, a mental health issue uh, or behavioral health care issue. Um, it, it doesn't discriminate, you know? Um, what, what I do find, though, is that some of the uh, attributes and, um, and qualities that we, we have on the field or on the court uh, really do lend themselves well to working on um, uh, behavioral health care and mental health issues, right? So some of the work ethic and, and the ability to take coaching, I think that, that uh, we're able to do, it really applies well um, and, and transfers well when working on those things. Um, so I want to switch gears just a little bit and um, just a couple things. Uh, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about your book, Think Like a Pro, Act Like a Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, Talk, talk to me about what, what were some of the reasons why you um, decided to write a book and, and really what's the book about? Like lay out some of the premise of it. Well, well, the, well, the reason for the book was it's game ready strategies to, to achieve results in business and in life. And um, one of the things that I wanted to tap into is, is basically things that have trans, uh, have, has translated from the field into the business world. Uh, uh, Things that that you were learned that were learned playing, whether it be leadership, work ethic, uh, perseverance, uh, dedication, character, all these things that 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 are part of of uh, the sports world transcends to, to to the business world as well. Well, if I when I hire somebody or when I've hired somebody, I want a good character person. See, one thing about uh, character, uh, it's hard to teach somebody character. I mean, you can teach somebody X's and O's. You can teach somebody the job that you want them to do. But most employers don't have the time to teach somebody character, how to be a good person, how, you know, all those type of things that they expect you to have those type of things. Someone can have a great resume. Someone can be um, on paper, look great, but doesn't get along with the other t uh, teammates. Uh, a cancer in the, in the office, cancer on the team. Uh, bad apple or whatever the case may be. And all those type of things uh, are very important uh, to build, to build in the team, uh, you know, together, you know, everyone achieves more, you know, is what really teams mean to me because together, you know, everyone achieves more. And, and anytime you have anyone who isn't a part of that element, uh, it, it uh, really struggles, you know, and when you look at uh, sports and what have you, uh, a lot of times guys have done well in, uh, in the transition because of being more of a team player 
and being and being a, a part of something bigger than themselves, a lot of individuals in, in some cases who have never played a sport or whatever, and they get into an environment where you have to be a team player, people struggle with that because it, because individuality uh, outweighs the team, and it it, man, it it comes to the forefront when you when you're in, in that group setting, and it really can really tear. Uh, tear a group down and, and, and those type of things have really resonated with me to, to really put something out, uh, out like this to be able to say you know to, to talk about those those different things uh, that I talk about in the book and it was kind of spurring on some of the teachings that I learned uh, uh, with my mother uh, unfortunately my mother had passed away in 2014 and and she um, would honor a lot of the thoughts and things that was that were instilled in me along the way even at a a young age, you know, being a leader, not a follower, you know, you know, follow, you know, do the right thing and, and your work ethic and, and, and our working uh, individuals and, and doing everything. Hey, all things may not always go your way, but uh, things come back around, but being able to stay on course and stay focused and doing the things that you need to do uh, to be successful. And that's one of the things that uh, I really, you know, focus on and character has always been a big thing with me um, as far as uh, individuals and, um, you know, in, in all walks of life. And, and one thing about sports, you get all kind of backgrounds. Uh, and people from all walks of life, uh, different individuals, different races, different colors, different backgrounds, different uh, ideologies, different religions. And all of a sudden you come in together for the betterment of the group to achieve this goal. There's nothing like that. And a lot of times people don't realize um, um, the, the things that you learn from obtaining different uh, thought processes and ideologies from different individuals because it only helps the team, it only helps the business or whatever the case may be when you get different ideas or being innovative or, or coming up with something that no one ever, no one else thought of. All those type of things are encouraged uh, in the same thing with in, in the team environment. And I always embrace that and I always embrace it in others, uh, being a captain of the team or, or or being a, one of the leaders of the team, where you, where you have individuals that, that bring all these things to the to the table, and when you see how it manifests into W's and wins and success, and everyone coming together and hugging, there's nothing like it. And and you try to bring that into your business, you try to bring that into your workplace, and all those type of things. And everyone uh, wasn't always uh, uh, raised that way or what have you, but they have to learn the company way as opposed to their way. If they can't get into whatever the company way is, the, that brand or whatever, build that brand because it, the brand, whatever company you're with, is bigger than you, is, is, is greater than you. You know, when I was Houston, with well, the brand, the oil Derrick on the helmet or the, the star on the Dallas Cowboy helmet or, or whatever your favorite team is, that's, that's the brand. It's not the individual. You have individual, individual players on it, but, the, but, the, but you're playing for the brand and the brand is is basically what you, uh, who you're playing for. And if you're not uh, helping the brand and you see a lot of cases, a lot of guys end up getting uh, left behind or getting replaced because of the fact that they're not a part of that brand. Yeah, I think there's, a, there, there's so many parallels in it and between business or, or uh, you know, building a, a team for a company and, and, uh, and playing the game, right? And playing, having a team sport, bringing that team together. Um, but but I, 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 I know you thought you were going to make it through the interview without me mentioning this, but, you know, getting to this teamwork thing, like, I want to go back to, to you know, the, the AFC championship game against the, the Buffalo Bills, okay? You guys are up, like, how, how many points were you guys up at, at halftime? I mean, you guys are... Uh, it was like 28-0 uh, a half, I think. Yeah, yeah, you... You don't remember much about that game, right? Like, it, it's not one of those that stick uh, I, out. I remember too much about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you know we we've we joked around about this before that you guys that year you had an amazing team right an amazing team um I, I mean primed to go to the Super Bowl like just rocking and rolling and um you know as a as a spectator watching that game like I had one viewpoint and and it just being up 28 nothing and and, and then seeing uh, – all I really saw was, was uh, Frank Reich for the Buffalo Bills come in in the second half and, and come back. And, and um, you know, that's what the casual fans saw. But through, through us talking, like, you, you were telling me that, that it, was, uh, it was more about the game plan, right, that on, you, on, on the Oilers' game plan of how it wasn't really set up to hold that lead. So 
You know, tell me a little bit about that. Let the audience know because I'm sure they're they're kind of wondering too. Like, what happened in that deal? <laughs> well, if 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 anyone can remember, our offense at that time was was called the run and shoot offense. It was a passing offense, and you put up points, and it was exciting and and flashy, you know, things like that. But one thing about it, uh, you didn't you didn't use up a lot of clock. Uh, uh, the running game uh, wasn't. All, you know, all that strong when, when need be, but when, when, when you know that you're going to be running the ball, um, it's hard to run the ball. When they know, when everyone knows you got to run the ball, right. you can't run the ball. But you it was more the box ball. against you. <laughs> yeah. So when we got the, got the, you know, had, you know, had the lead, uh, obviously things started turning and that, you know, started having turnovers and um, they would score. Now all of a sudden the offense, uh, th- uh, throw an interception, and then they score, and then and then we couldn't we couldn't eat up the clock. So they were scoring, but the clock wasn't moving. Basically, it was like one, two, three, and out, and then run and shoot. If you go first down, second down, third down, and you have to punt, and only thirty seconds go off the clock, well, the other team get more time to keep, to keep scoring. So in in a traditional sense, you know, you 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 can pound the run, keep getting first downs, and be able to run out the clock. Well. In Buffalo, you know, you got swirling winds. You have, you don't have always the greatest uh, weather. Weather, so our offense wasn't conducive to that. But uh, we didn't have a backup uh, plan as far as the offense goes. As far as okay, well, if we got a lead, how do we hold on to the lead? Well, we kept throwing as if we, as if it was zero zero, and things, you know, tip ball here, interception there. Different things would happen. Would kick off the wind, blows it back. You know, guy yeah. run out of bounds, come back in bounds, catch the pass. Referee doesn't call it. So everything that could go wrong did go wrong. So with that being said, uh, that's not being able to adjust. And then when when you're in a situation like that, then individuals start trying to take it upon themselves to fix it. Right. And when that happens in a team setting, one thing about football, when you have 11 players on the field, every player has a job to do. If one player doesn't do his job, then bad things happen. A hole is open, a guy is running wide open, all those type of things like that. That's one thing that's so great about sports, and but at the same time, it can uh, it can be bad as well because everyone has a job to do. Not for me to do the next guy's job because he didn't do his job. I still have to do my job even if he didn't do his job. I can't try to do his job and do my job because as soon as I try to do his job, then my job, <laughs> there's an opening – uh, on my end as well. So everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, uh, you know, I'll say to this day, would it beat the Cowboys in the in the <laughs> in the Super Bowl because <laughs> we had them. I mean, we always we you know we scrimmage them, we play them in the preseason, we play them in the regular season. We 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 always had them at at their height. We you know we talk about when they had the, all their guns because we matched up. We matched up real well with them, uh, and it would have been a great uh, Texas shootout <laughs> in the Super Bowl if it could have happened. Man, I, I would have loved to see that. I'll call Jerry up and see if uh, see if we can't make that match up, you know, again. I know. But <laughs> have an old time shootout or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, the, um, I, I love that story because, you know, once again, you guys had an amazing team, right? And and uh, but the the inability to to adjust. Um and, and we had beat uh, them the week before. Happened. We had huh? beat them. Remember, we had beat them the week before. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> So yeah, we had beat them the week before, before the, the playoff game. We beat them the last game of the season, and they had to play them again the next week, and then it, it turned. <laughs> See, and, and, and so in, in our field here, where that's so important, I think, in, in behavioral health care and in business in general, is that, like, we can have a dream team. We can go out there and assemble a, a great team. Um, but it, it, because our field changes so much, I mean, it's just like, the the weather in buffalo right it changes constantly from year to year um we have to be flexible and adapt and i think sometimes uh people come into business thinking that they're going to use the same tools that worked you know four or five years ago and and it just doesn't work now you know and they try to just keep doing that over and over and over again and are inflexible i think that's just to, to me that was one of the most valuable um tools that i learned and 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 just from you and i talking about that story it's one of the the biggest takeaways that I, I've, I had from that is that you can have a great team, but not only do you have to have a plan, you got to have a backup plan and you have to be flexible in that plan. And just like life, you know, we always have to uh, 
adaptability is one of the uh, chapters of the book, being able to adapt, being able to change, uh, being able to change from uh, uh, play to play, quarter to quarter, half to half, game to game. You know, th that's the difference between good coaches and, and, and bad coaches. Because you can see, okay, even though things are going great, I mean, everyone has watched a game where basketball, otherwise baseball, where everything was going great for a team uh, the first quarter. And then things change or, or the second – or even the first half, things were going great. And then the second half, all of a sudden they came out here. It was almost like a, a whole different team. And everything went, went south. Well, one team adjusted and another team didn't adjust. It's like a chess match. You have to continue to move pieces along the way. And the ones that can adjust um, play to play and adjust quarter to quarter and adjust half to half uh, are more successful than the ones that have to wait to halftime to adjust because somebody has a good coach would have just away before halftime. And not only that, you come out after halftime and then somebody uh, does a counter adjustment. Well, the game would be over before you'd be able to change anything. So you got to be able to adjust the third quarter and the fourth quarter or play to play or series to series. So that's what I always enjoyed about sports, being able to be the, uh, uh, the mental aspect of it, being able to change, be able to adapt. And, and being able to uh, 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 do things on the run. That's why a lot of decisions are made. Split-second decisions, you know, plays happen like that. And you have to make a decision on, on, on what to do and what have you. So um, a lot of decisions that in the confines of a nice air-conditioned office doesn't really bother <laughs> <a lot. laughs> Man, that's, that's good stuff. Um, cool. So, so last thing I'll ask is, um, you know, I, I – for the NFL Alumni Association, I think it's such a uh, an important organization. Um, we we have this this viewpoint of of the guys that come in and and uh, the superstars out there that that uh, they get in, um, they 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 play a long career, they set up stuff after their career, and then they're um, you know they they retire and they they live in the good life, right? But that's just that is such a small piece of of what the NFL uh, alumni is, right? Like the the majority of you guys are uh, played out one contract, right? And uh, and so uh, I want to give you a minute to talk about the the important role of the NFL Alumni Association for the alumni themselves. Well, one thing about the NFL Alumni Association, uh, it, it encompasses uh, young and old. We have from from twenties to the eighties, you know, because you don't know how long your career is. Some guys play one year, some guys play, you know, twenty years or ten years or or five years. It doesn't matter. You're still part of an uh, alumni family. And one thing that we do in our organization is, is one thing is about caring for our own as far as the, some of the things that you talked about earlier, uh, mental health, uh, 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 financial assistance, or, or what have you, you know, during you know, tornado relief or, or the COVID situation, being able to have a, a ability to be able to help out and, and help somebody get through a tough time, do those type of things as far as caring for your own better health care, uh, you just saw the, the new collective bargaining agreement as far as getting better pensions and what have you guys from the past were getting uh, uh, pensions that couldn't, couldn't, I mean, that you would laugh at that really couldn't live off of. And, and some of those things have, have started to change. And the other uh, component of, of the, that we do is caring for kids, giving back to the community. Uh, you and I are, are, are doing a tournament together. Uh, here uh, to give back to the community. And one thing that we do is just focus on, on, on kids' charities. Um, not against any other charities, but, you know, kids are our future. We, you know, trying to build through youth, youth organizations and be able to give the opportunity for those kids to be able to come up and have opportunities and build through them uh, within our communities and give back to the community. So we have a two-pronged approach as far as caring for our own and caring for kids. And that is uh, uh, our main focus, and that's what we kind of uh, uh, that that's what we do, and and being able to to give back to community and do great things uh, in the community. Well, I, I tell you, I'm really um, I'm excited to 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 help out and and uh, hopefully raise uh, raise some money for a great cause and and um, and be a part of the project. And and uh, so I, I'm I'm going to do this. Let me let me share this back up here again for everyone to see. Um, I want to. Uh, put this information out there. If, if you guys, if y'all want to be involved or get involved with the NFL Alumni Association, um, I, I've got a number up here. If you want to um, email or, uh, or check out the websites, nflalumnitn.org, um, uh, and uh, find out how to be involved. Um, if, if you want to uh, reach out and, and have any questions for, for Al or, or myself, you, you can always email me. I put my email up at the end of this, and I'll, 
put you in touch with the, uh, people to get involved with the NFL Alumni Association um, because I, I do think the work that, that's being done there is, is uh, important and, um, uh, and it just helps so many people. So we're just uh, really glad to have to be a part of this deal and, and uh, to be able to partner with them. So um, let's see. So with that, uh, Al, is there anything else you'd like to add for the audience before we, uh, before we thank our sponsors and shut it down? Yes, and, and, and nationally, the website is NFLalumni.org, you know, like you know, in other parts of the country or what have you. Just the TN is for Tennessee, the, you know, for this particular area in the Tennessee, the state of Tennessee. But NFLalumni.org is our, our national site uh, and be able to kind of uh, know how to, um, you know, connect locally in your, in your areas, respective areas. And that's one thing that... Um, uh, you know, we try to do and give out and, and other, uh, there's other opportunities for, for companies and people to be a part of the NFL alumni. It's not just players. We have uh, business leaders, uh, so we call uh, associate members. We have an uh, enterprise membership uh, for businesses um, that uh, have a access to alumni, whether it be speaking engagements or, or, or appearances and different things that, that they can tap into. Uh, whether it be reaching out to me or reaching out to, uh, um, you know, uh, different individuals in your area or to Glenn or whatever the case may be, uh, to be able to be uh, members in that, in that way. So you kind of um, be a part of the family, be a part of, uh, of uh, what we're trying to do and our caring for kids. You see our caring for kids, the model uh, within the shield. But um, there's a lot of ways to be involved. Um, you know, hopefully that um, um, you guys will want to be a part of it, uh, do great things in the community and being able to uh, uh, help one another. And, uh, you know, thank you for your time, Glenn. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show and being a part of this thing. Um, I, I'm, I, like I say, I'm real excited to get out on the golf course with you in a couple of weeks and go out there and, and raise the money for, uh, for a good cause. Um, so with that, I'm gonna, I wanna go ahead and thank our sponsors once again. Um, I, I put the, the websites up there. So we've got RevWorks for all of your billing needs in, in behavioral health care. Uh, reach out to the guys there. You can go to the website at revworks.org. And uh, there's Dave again. Dave is uh, our, our magician in the background that's been uh, making sure that the, the everything stays working and rocking and rolling in this deal. So Dave's Dreamscape Marketing for any of your uh, marketing needs out there. Uh, if you need websites, SEO stuff done, reach out to the guys at Dreamscape. They really are the professionals in this field. Um, and then I put my, my email at the bottom uh, with Glennon at southworthassociates.net. Um, and so if you have any questions, uh, if you'd like to be on the show or have an idea for a guest to be on the show, please shoot me an email and, and reach out to us there. We'd, uh, we'd love to talk and, and continue the conversation. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close today. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Look for us every Wednesday at noon central or uh, we're at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And uh, with that, we'll sign off. Thank you guys so much and you'll have a great week. Thank you.